Good morning, this is Pastor Marvin Osborne, First Baptist Church of Birmingham, Ohio. Uh, I hope you're well. I hope your family's well. And I'm praying for you on your side. And uh, if I can be of uh, help to you, you give me a call. My number, uh, our passage today is, is found in Acts chapter 16, verse 31. What a great promise this is. And this is a warning to all of us. It says, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. If When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, it has a, an effect on those you love. He's not saying here that if I get saved, my children are automatically saved, that somehow that my, um, my, uh, there's an umbrella there that covers them, that they're getting into heaven because of, uh, on my coattails. No, no, no. What it's saying here is that when I get saved and, and, and my life changes and all of a sudden as a, as the patriarch of our family and, uh, as, as when I get up and uh, on Sunday mornings, I'm going to take my kids with, uh, to church as well. And they're going to be under the influence of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when they see that I've gotten saved and my life has changed, that I don't speak the way I used to speak. Those old curse words aren't there anymore. Um, they see their father uh, spending time in, in the Bible. They hear us uh, praying over our meals. And, and all of a sudden, we, we get them involved in Sunday school and a lot of programs and programs and children's programs and and different things like that, all of a sudden, uh, the faith that I have now becomes their faith. Now, it's certainly it's up to them whether they're going to do it or not, whether they're going to receive Christ or not. But the fact is that the odds are better that when dad gets saved or mom gets saved, that the children are going to get saved as well, because we're putting them under the influence of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the Bible says here in Acts chapter 16, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and your house. That means when you get saved, the opportunity, the doorway to, to Jesus Christ is now available, now open uh, through your faith to them. What does that mean? It means, I think it has a couple of implications. Number one, if you're not saved, you need to get saved. You need to get saved, number one, for your soul's sake and also for your children, your family, because how you go typically is how your children go. Now, there's, cycle, there's chains and the, uh, the uh, chains uh, and the cycle oftentimes are broken. That certainly there's someone who the, the, the chain of unbelief is broken with them. And uh, and that happens all the time. It happened with our family, and uh, and it, I'm sure maybe it's even happened in your family. But the fact is, is that uh, typically what happens is that generation after generation after generation of of people uh, who come from unbelievers stay on un they stay unbelievers and they never get saved. So you need to get make sure that you're get saved. And number two, if you care about your children. If you care about your uh, your grandchildren, if you care about your your neighbors, you know what you need to get saved, and you need to get back like you're saved. If you're saved, you need to be where God wants you to be. You need to make sure your children are put under the influence of the church, put under the influence of the Word of God, so they see the priority of living a life for Christ. Because if you don't live it, chances are they're not going to live it, and neither will your grandchildren. What do you want? What kind of legacy do you want to leave for your children? You want to leave money? Big deal. You want to leave a, a, a nice inheritance for them? Big deal. There's only two eternal things that matter in life. Two eternal things. Your whole life boils down to two things. The Word of God and the souls of men. The Word of God and the souls of men. Are you saved? Are your children saved? Are your grandchildren saved? You know what? It starts with you. It starts with you. You need to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. You need to make sure your life is, is founded in the church, that you're, you're putting your children under the influence of the church. There, there are no excuses. 
What excuse are you going to give at the throne of God because you say you're saved, but you didn't make church a priority in your life? And your children end up going to hell, or they get caught up in drugs, or they get caught up in, in sex, or they get caught up in, in alcohol, they get caught up with, with, um, with gang-like activities because you chose to, to rest on Sunday or watch football on Sunday or be where you're not supposed to be on Sunday. You need to make church a priority in your life. You need the Word of God a priority in your homes. Am I being tough? You better believe I am, because I'm tired of the excuses. Tired of it. Tired of them. We as believers need to make things right. To live the life that we're supposed to be. To come out from among them and be ye separate. Be separate from how the world acts. Sunday is the Lord's day. We need to be in, the, in God's house on the Lord's day. Your day should start in the Word of God. You should be spending time in prayer, praying over your kids. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your total faith and trust in Him. And you will be saved. And not only you, but you open the doorway for your kids as well. When my dad was invited to church, you know what he did? He took all of our family the church with him. And there, there it, it wasn't a debate. It wouldn't matter what if I voiced my opinion. I didn't want to be there. But it's there I got saved. And it's there my life changed. It's there that my family's life got changed. And now my children and grandchildren, the generational curse stopped when my dad went to church and we heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, why don't you pray and receive him as your Savior today? Say, dear God, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins, that through his death and his burial and resurrection, my sins are, are paid for. I repent of my sins. Come into my life and save me now. Save me forever. I want to be yours. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen? Amen. Remember that God loves you, and I love you as well. And I'll talk to you.